welcome to Montreal Rocks. And today we have somebody who we just featured on our New Music Friday as the band you want to listen to when you're starting a revolution or you're participating in one. And we hope that they start a revolution as well because they have a lot to say. So we have with us in studio, Soft Cult. We have Mercedes uh, and we also have Phoenix. Hi. Hi, thanks for having us. It's a pleasure. First of all, let's address the elephant in the room. Yes, they're twins. (laughs) Next question. (laughs) Yes, they're women. Get over it. Next question. (laughs) Okay, so we got that out of the way. We can now talk about real stuff because we don't have to get into the bog down of that stuff. (laughs) Love it. With two powerful musicians, Mercedes and Phoenix. Um, So Mercedes, let's start with you. You're on guitar Mm -hmm. uh, and also do vocals, of course. And your name could either mean mercy or pity, or could also be a reward. Which do you identify with more? Ooh. I guess uh, mercy. You could say mercy and pity are sort of the same thing. But yeah. I like to think of it as, yeah, being compassionate, I guess. And you, did, you really did your research there. Like when it, people just think it's like the car or something most of the time, you know? So <laughs> it's a little bit easier with Phoenix because we have that whole, you know, rising from the ashes uh, analogy. <laughs> um, and of course, you do drums and also do vocals. I do. What is one thing that you've overcome in your life that you're proud of, that you've risen from the ashes of? Oh, huh. that's a really, that's a good question, actually. Dang. Um, let me think here. <laughs> There's a lot of things. <laughs> yeah. No, um, I think for a while there, um, I, my mental health hasn't always been the best. So, uh, especially actually last year at the start of the pandemic, when things were getting pretty intense and scary for everyone, I found myself going through a really rough time mentally, but then luckily, I think I I pretty much pulled through and and used a lot of that time that could have been a really bummer, sad isolation time to focus on music and creating music and learning about recording. And I feel better for it for sure. So I think, yeah, I'm, I think I'm proud of that. (laughs) Definitely. Well, thank you for sharing and for opening up. And I, I see that you're in your home studio right now. And it's one thing that I, I know you guys uh, took, a, or guys, gals, a lot of time uh, during the pandemic to just, you know, get down and, and write. You, you guys, you know, you do everything. You, 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 do the, you, know, you do the music, you do the visuals, you do the graphics, you do the video. You, you, you almost take, basically take care of every aspect of this this band so we're going to dive into that before we get there i like to start a little bit back at the beginning so i want to f- maybe bring you back to a time where you're both little girls mm-hmm. you're in your parents house or maybe in the car you're most likely surrounded by music we're most likely exposed by the music that our parents listen to but at a certain point in our life there comes this music that starts speaking to us directly and it becomes our music. Was there a song or a band that really flipped the switch for you where music went from something you heard to something you felt? Mm. <laughs> yeah, definitely. Uh, one that sticks out in my mind is the band Death Cab for Cutie, um, okay. which we've loved since we were kids, for sure. Uh, that Plans album uh, we were listening to when we were maybe 11 or Ten, even like mm-hmm. just really into that album and I love Ben Gibbard's lyrics and musicianship because now he does the guitars and everything for that band too um and yeah just his lyrics are, are really personal and relatable but he also uses a lot of analogies and storytelling through imagery and stuff like that so I really love that in lyrics and then musically, especially on guitar, it's just so emotional and has so many dynamics and stuff. So I would say like to this day, there's still such a huge influence for us. And 
yeah, we found them pretty early. Like we were pretty young when we discovered them. So yeah. <laughs> yeah, I think I think I'd probably have to say the same. Yeah, Death Cab for Cutie. Um, I remember also listening to so much Alexis on Fire, oh, yeah. a Canadian mm-hmm. band back in the day, and of course, Dallas Green. Yeah, yeah, of course, you, yeah know. you know, yeah. <laughs> uh, and Jordan Hastings, I think he's still probably one of my favorite drummers ever. Just his parts are so creative, and the way he plays is so cool. Uh, so that definitely is inspiring, and. I remember like we would literally be in the car practicing harmonies mm-hmm. to uh, Crisis. So we'd be listening to that album and just like practicing, singing along with Dallas, trying to sing along with Dallas. Yeah. yeah. We used to annoy our dad so much because he would drive us to our studio sessions and stuff before we could really drive and everything. And then we would just be like harmonizing with everything. It's like, why can't you just listen to this? Yeah. Song? <laughs> Not that yeah, I don't think he ever really cared, but he was always kind of the MVP taking yeah. us to and from those types of places. And of course, your first band was Courage My Love. Mm-hmm. And I'm sure you've learned a lot from that experience, but uh, correct me if I'm wrong, but in the beginning, you kind of changed your music to fit kind of this industry mold. Mm-hmm. But now you kind of resisted that and you're finding your own voice. What gave you the power to say, no, we're going to do what we want to do. Really good question. Yeah, the the backstory behind all of that and kind of the reason why that band ended was because we were grinding away on that band for 10 years. So we started it as teenagers, like barely teenagers Mm -hmm. at the time. And uh, then we were touring and we were really lucky. Like we got uh, some major labels interested in us uh, early on. And our first release was through a major label and stuff. So it was really exciting, but then the longer we were in it and the more we wanted to try and maybe push our own boundaries or, or just try and do weirder, more alternative music that we really liked, there was a lot of clashing on the creative side with our label. And so for a while there, we kind of were forced to create music that was within this mold that works on Canadian radio, basically. Because otherwise we would send like a bunch of demos and the, you know, email responses would just be kind of like, uh, I don't know, I don't think this is the one. And so we'd spend like, you know, a year or so just grinding away in the studio and get a lot of rejection type thing. Mm. Then we were like, okay, well, just to be able to release anything at all, we kind of have to give them what they want. And that's what it felt like, you know, like we were just kind of writing and trying to guess what they wanted instead of doing what we wanted to do. So I think that whole experience was rough on us <laughs> and we just never wanted to kind of get in that situation again. So with Soft Cult, since like you said before, like we do a lot of the um, creative stuff from visuals to recording at home, all of that stuff. Um, It really was our chance to just do whatever we want and, you know, have it be our voice. And uh, I think it paid off because I feel a lot more connected to it personally. Mm -hmm. I mean, when we say voice, it it could also mean visuals, right? Because it's just about your sound and who you are as people. Uh, I found that really interesting. You also dabbled a little bit in movies. And what I found truly interesting is that your IMDb kind of mirror each other. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, in fact, there was a doppelhanger short that is, you you guys look pretty young in there. Yeah, so so that's funny. Actually, like we did do some acting as uh, as kids mostly. Yeah. Uh, Like into, I guess, like early teens. Uh, the screenshots like haunt us to this yeah, day. Yeah, they're so they're on the internet. They're yeah. floating around the internet, and it's pretty <laughs> terrifying to be honest. No, but uh, they mortify. Yeah, they. Um, but no, it's funny because yeah, kind of like our music career, our our like acting career. Also, we pretty much did everything together. Like we would yeah. do auditions for either the same role or like a twin role. <clears throat> And yeah, kind of the same with our music. Like we haven't really been in a musical project uh, without, each, without other. each other. Yeah. yeah. We've always just been doing stuff together like that. So it's not surprising that it would like, I think in terms of 
our professional career in anything, we've always kind of been doing things together. Mm -hmm. So kind of those stereotypical twins that just are always by each other's yeah. side. <laughs> but, but I guess there's also a, a trust of being vulnerable with someone that you you're so close to, you, you can open up and, and, you know, there's going to be the fights just like any, uh, I, I, I'm a, I, I'm completely the opposite because I'm an only child. So I have no clue what it feels like to even have a brother or sister, let alone a twin, but I'm sure that there's some, uh, there's some trust there and there's got to be some fights and so, all those things. But, um, over the years, you learned how to navigate those waters and then you, you get to be close. So, like, I, I have a feeling you guys are close. Yeah, yeah, no, for sure. We do, we do. I mean, yeah, like we do fight and butt heads, but it's it doesn't last very long. We're <laughs> and it's it's never over anything serious. It's like if we're writing a song and one person thinks that it should go one way and the other person thinks it should go the other way, but we always resolve it and work it out. And um, yeah, we don't really fight over anything serious. Major, yeah. yeah, and it's I guess it's par for the course when you you're. Uh, professional partner is also a family member like you're just so much closer already and and you have like less of a filter I guess yeah around each other so when it comes to songwriting I do feel <laughs> bless you oh. <laughs> I do feel so much closer to Phoenix and I can be more vulnerable with lyrics and stuff like that we can talk about things like Phoenix knows you know kind of the ghosts of my past and stuff like other people wouldn't know and and it helps uh because um i just feel like we can be like really honest with each other if we're vibing an idea or if we're not vibing an idea there's no like ego involved mm -hmm. or anything like that so yeah well what i like about the music that you do and i really enjoy the sound i mean it's just it's right on my wheelhouse it's 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 like taking this nostalgia from all the stuff I used to listen to, the, the shoegaze movement and some of the God stuff, and you kind of put it into your own sound. And I could tell right away, like the first song I heard is like, oh, it just stood out right away. Like it felt authentic. It felt, it felt, it sounded really good. Yeah. Uh, and I have a, and you guys are not shy about getting into things like talking about topics that are, um, maybe a little dark uh, for some but also that you know to, to me when you talk about dark topics you're bringing light to it so you're also bringing hope or allowing people to uh, feel a camaraderie with you find, find some sort of bond with your audience uh, mm -hmm. is that is that what you try to do with the writing process I think so yeah I mean you said it like there's a lot of things that maybe uh, people try to stay away from when they write lyrics or topics I guess that maybe it's like taboo but I feel like writing about that stuff it's kind of like once you like if we would have heard maybe those kind of topics in a song when we were younger it would have meant a lot and gone a long way so I think mm -hmm. being able to write about that stuff and then like hopefully find people that when they hear they can relate and it really hits home I think that's pretty much what it's all about you know in particular like lately we've been focusing on gender violence issues and abusive relationships and stuff like that and so it's like phoenix said like it, if we kind of raise awareness on these things even just of red flags to look out for then hopefully the goal is that whoever's listening to it will have these tools that you know i think our generation kind of wish that we had and we had to figure it out the hard way but now mm -hmm. We live in a society where uh, things are so much more open and you and you can talk about these things. Um, and so, yeah, that's kind of our goal is to raise awareness and empower people from the start. OK, you raised an interesting point here, and it kind of goes into something I, I want to talk about is back in the day, it was Kathleen Hanna mm -hmm. who invited girls to the front. Mm -hmm. Now, that was a. Uh, a, a beautiful thing was a voice of change. It empowered them to participate in the music, not just be bystanders at the back. Uh, what do you think should be done today to make gigs safer for all people? Man, yeah, that's the question. That's mm -hmm. honestly the question that it's like hard to figure out. Cause now I think like when we think about feminism, uh, 
it to us it's not something that it's just for women it's for everyone like everyone can be a feminist everyone should be a feminist uh, and and i think an important uh point with that is it if we kind of exclude you know men from feminism then the same issues will just keep popping up over and over again and it it won't go anywhere so it needs to be an inclusive scene for sure mm. and um how to make it more safe i think making it uh you know a scene that's educated so that we can look out for each other so right now in the uk for example um there is a big problem with spiking drinks and like uh that sort of the date rape uh scene is kind of rising up again so even just making people aware and sort of having this buddy system like at our shows for example we're going to do everything we can to make sure they're safe shows if we see any sketchy stuff go down we're just going to stop the show call it out you know it, it's going to be a zero tolerance policy for anything like that or and I, and I think it's good the more bands that can do that and kind of make that the precedent for their shows and not be afraid to call it out then the scene will inherently be safer mm -hmm. even like like um in the wake of the astro world thing that happened the where people died it's kind of like i think people need to be more okay with like stopping shows if if it gets out of hand if it gets violent if things start going crazy and you see people getting pushed around or having a rough time you need to stop you can't just I don't know. You can't just kind of like, oh, whatever. It, it, set, it set the bad example of <laughs> yeah. in, in going on with the show, and it it probably cost the lives of uh, more people. Yeah, For real. yeah, definitely. Fortunately, so a lot of work to do, but hopefully the things will get better. Uh, mm -hmm. Let's talk a little bit about the the new stuff. Uh, some some of the songs that came out. Um, I, I think it's it's hilarious that you guys got stopped by the police a little bit while you're doing your late one of your latest videos. I hope, I hope nobody got arrested. I mean, no. it was a little, you know, probably scary imagery for a cop to see uh, you guys. Yeah. Were it wasn't exactly surprising, I guess. Like, you know, they're <laughs> wearing masks and they have like weapons. They weren't real weapons. So they mm -hmm. just looked real. Um, but yeah, I think we know exactly what happened there. there. We were filming just on a street and then there was a car that was driving down the street and they stopped and then reversed really fast and pulled away down another street. And yeah. then like 10 minutes later, the cops showed up. So yeah. I think it was like we someone called someone. in and yeah. were concerned that there was like some gang well, stuff happening. <laughs> let's, let's, let's go uh, a few of the last ones. Uh, Spit It Out, which is interesting because it's about rejecting harmful ideologies. Uh, what's the biggest lie in the music industry today that needs to be spat out? Mm. Dang. From personal experience, um, I guess I would say that being like a woman in the industry, there was always a lot of pressure of like, oh, you have to like kind of just trust like this circle and not trust like if a band wants to take you on tour you know you're kind of planting these seeds of like oh they just want to work with you because they want to sleep with you and while it's important to be aware of that i think you need to own your talent sometimes and not just you know write everything off as like oh it's because i'm female and they probably are attracted to me or something like that it just minimizes like who you are and what you do and while it's it's a fact that you're gonna have to prove yourself, um, and that's the best way to kind of shut down the haters, you know what I mean? I think I, it's important not to focus so hard on your outward appearance. And it's like, just let the music do the talking. Don't worry about all of that stuff, you know? Yeah, I'd say probably that. And uh, I think a lot of people, it's, it's starting to change now, but I think a lot of people um, in the past have felt like they couldn't speak up about certain mm. things for fear of getting like blacklisted or sure. you know having labels kind of get in the way of things or management and stuff like it's it, it the roots go so deep like in any industry you're always scared to um piss off the people at the top 
because you don't want them to get in the way of your future. But I guess it's like, I don't know. I think that needs to be for people. You have a platform that yeah. you can use for good. So you should use I, it. I think there was this whole level of secrecy, you know, the, the boys club secrecy that uh, when those floodgates erupted, it just was insane. All the mm -hmm. stuff that people were they knew about so they're complicit in, in it if you know about something and you don't speak up you are complicit you have to speak up i think it's important to protect everyone uh especially those that are uh, young those that are vulnerable uh, mm -hmm. those that are easily hurt uh they need to be protected so if you say, something, say something right and yeah. promoters too or like people booking festivals and stuff like that it's like yeah maybe the headliner you book them because they can draw like a ton of people. But if you know that by having them in that atmosphere, you might be putting some fans at risk because of something they did in their past. It's like, it's like on you as well to just not support that kind of artist and find another headliner, yeah. you know? I feel like, yeah, there's a lot of stuff that gets kind of like buried because, you know, someone's it's convenient. It's convenient yeah. and someone's making money for someone. So they're like, well, you know, we don't want to stop this train, <laughs> but yeah. And, and you can't use the excuse boys will be boys because yeah. that no longer <laughs> flies. Not the table. <laughs> Next song, Perfect Blue, your latest uh, release, which is probably the one I like the most out mm -hmm. of the songs I've heard so far. Uh, mm -hmm. It's it's a slower vibe. It really allows you guys to shine um, musically. You know, it, it's got a lot of atmosphere textures um in the song what i found was interesting was a person is so changed that they're kind of unrecognizable except for the blue eyes right mm -hmm. yeah what is one of your strongest characteristics that is completely you Ooh. like those blue eyes <laughs> that's a good question good question what do you think <laughs> um it's probably easier if I say what I think Phoenix is, is I guess, because I'm not good at like analyzing myself. That <laughs> way. But I think Phoenix is and has always been so fiercely loyal. So if you're one of <laughs> their friends, they will uh, fight for you to the death and they will basically just stand by you, stand up for you. And you find like this strength for other people that you don't even give to yourself all the time. So I'd say that that's never changed. Like since we were little toddlers, it's <laughs> always been that way. So that's why it's great to have Fiend as my twin. <laughs> and vice versa. Uh, yeah. Oh no, I, I would literally say the same about you. Like, um, yeah, I don't know. Being like growing up like queer and stuff obviously had some weird you know comments and like things thrown at me and then I've always always had my sister to have my back so never really felt like I was going through the world alone which I think that's the beauty of being a twin but mm -hmm. also some twins aren't that way with each other so mm -hmm. maybe I'm just super lucky that way mm -hmm. but yeah <laughs> back, back to the video uh I noticed that the scars were underneath that skin that outer skin do you sometimes find that people create this hardened shell to protect their wounds? But yet, like, unless those wounds are exposed, they'll never fully heal, right? Yeah, yeah, absolutely. That is a trauma thing. And that's what makes it so sad is someone who has been traumatized will tend to hide that stuff and then repress it. But it always comes out eventually. So it's like the sooner you can process it and deal with it, and get it out of your life the sooner you can move on but unfortunately that's not usually what happens it usually takes a while to process these things and then it's kind of working away under the surface while you're kind of pretending everything's fine right so you caught on to that analogy that's awesome that you like that you saw that and noticed that that was the first thing i noticed i thought <laughs> what i i find interesting too is um when it comes to trauma, a lot of times trauma will affect the decisions we make. So we, we kind of become a uh, part of our, our past self, like something happened to us and we'll take sometimes bad decisions based on those effects of that trauma. And sometimes when you shine a light on it, you can reframe the trauma 
and maybe find out what did you learn from it or how it might have made you a better person, maybe more empathetic uh, or uh, like your name suggests. <laughs> and, and when you do that, you kind of reframe it. It kind of takes away its power. And then you can kind of focus on your future self on who you want to become and, and try to find those qualities and, and embrace those qualities and kind of leave off the effects of past one. Yeah, that's, that's very a great true. Point. Yeah, that's a way to make it mean something that's positive and not just have a negative impact. And it's a good way, I think, of processing it because a lot of the time, like you said, these patterns will just keep continuing. So it's like, let's say you had a bad relationship and then your next relationship, you end up finding someone that has the same qualities as that bad relationship because it's like you're trying to resolve it with a different um outcome i guess like the same situation with a different outcome and then that's how people can get stuck in this pattern that just continues and continues and continues so it's good to to find the silver lining i guess of what came out of it and maybe made you stronger in some ways mm -hmm. you know so the the new ep is you're the snake following you're the rat mm -hmm. um look forward to that uh, you can find it pretty much uh, is, is it I, I should have known this before, but it's, it's coming out uh, when? February 4th. Okay. So it's coming out pretty soon. Yeah. <laughs> uh, two last things. One, I want to know, goofy question, but do you know what Baroque is yet? Oh yes. my God. <laughs> you, you saw the TikTok? <laughs> uh, yeah. Okay. The Baroque period is not the same as going broke, yeah. uh, which I learned, but yeah the baroque period you learned in front of all your classmates in school so that was kind of fun yeah, you know kind of outed ourselves in front of everybody it's funny because like i think people <laughs> thought that you were just being like a class clown and joking around but you truthfully I did not earnest know. and yeah, yeah you didn't know yeah. well being an artist sometimes is being a baroque yeah, yeah. It's, it's really tough these days but it, it shows that you just love the craft and, and we de definitely can see the labor of love and all that you're you're doing it's really something it, 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 it could show it shows in the music mm -hmm. i want to end with something uh that i call fantasy rock band okay so i'm not a sports guy i'm a music guy so i you know you've probably heard about these fantasy sports things you got to build this fantasy team i want you guys to build um pardon me if i keep saying guys but you know what i mean <laughs> it's like neutral so <laughs> uh, I, I want you to build the ultimate fantasy rock band like a singer guitarist bassist and drummer any other musical instrument you want if you wish that's gonna be tough that's cool um okay we should probably go back and forth okay. and just add members uh, you can start with the drums. Yeah, I was going to say, drums, I already know. Uh, obviously, has to be Dave Grohl on drums. Like, Ooh. come on. Yeah. And yeah. you guys were born the year that Kurt died, so there's a, there's a link there. Yeah, yeah there yeah. is. It's so weird to feel a connection to something that, like, was before you were born. But, yeah, there is such a connection there for some reason. Yeah. Okay, Dave Grohl on Dave drums. Dave Grohl um okay vocals let's say bjork Ooh. let's put bjork on those vocals nice okay dang <gasps> we need two guitars because two guitars yeah. uh i would say kevin shields probably Ooh. on guitar one Ooh. yeah <laughs> okay so kevin shields my bloody valentine and i'm blanking right now on the radiohead guitarist what his name is oh dang uh, what's his name He's like such an important part of the band. I'll I'll look it I'll up. Look it up right now. <laughs> That's who I choose, in. though. That's Radio who I choose. Guitarist. Uh, there's oh. two of them, but there's one in particular. Not that I don't love uh, both of them, but oh, um. I would choose Johnny Greenwood, okay. the Radiohead guitarist. Look up uh, Death Cab for Cutie's bass player. Ooh. I think we need... yeah. Oh, yeah. See, this is <laughs> stacking up to be a pretty sick band. I yeah. really want to see this band. Yeah, right? You're, okay. you're okay. Nick Hammer. Nick Hammer. Harmer. Harmer. Nick Harmer. Sorry, Nick Harmer on, on bass. Sorry, yeah. It's the bass player curse. It's like we really value <laughs> the dope bass player, but we don't know the name. 
Mm -hmm. Now we do. Yeah. Nick Harmer, <laughs> remember that name? <laughs> yeah. Basically, th this is my way of finding out who are the bands that influence you over the years uh, without asking the boring question. So we can kind of see that you, you've had some a um, little bit of emo punk stuff going down. You've got Bjork, which is a little bit out there, which I love. I mean, uh, talk about somebody who uh, has no fear to do what they feel like doing and somehow breaks through and gets a fan base too. So that's yeah. the lesson right there. And of course, Dave, Dave Grohl is a lovable figure and a talented musician. And I, I would definitely go see this band. So, yeah, right. I think that'd be kind of cool. It'd be, it'd be everything let's we like. Let's make a petition to make it happen. Yeah. <laughs> They're all still active. They're all still alive. Let's yeah. do it now. <laughs> well, thank you so much, um, Mercedes and Phoenix. Uh, we look forward to some new music coming soon. And of course, the, the album the, for the EP coming out in February. So make sure to pre save that in Spotify. We'll put all the links in the show notes. Thanks so much for uh, talking to us today. We really, uh, Hope that you continue what you're doing and I'm sure you'll you'll do great. Oh thank, thank you. you so much. Thanks for having yeah, us. Yeah, it, it was really fun to talk. So thank you. Thank you.